It is difficult to speak clearly about my faith. It is a struggle to believe what I believe. And it is a greater struggle to express what I believe. I have not conveyed a faith that is without doubt. I have spoken about a faith which contains doubt. My faith contains doubt. The Bible does say, trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. I do trust in the Lord, but not completely. I cannot trust in Him completely. I haven't reached that point in my life, if such a point can ever be reached. There was a time in my life when I trusted in God and in money. Now that the support of money is slowly being removed from my life, I understand that my trust must be placed entirely in God. It is difficult to trust God completely. But He has said, In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. So it is not possible to find strength without trusting in God. That must be the reason why I am so disturbed, at least on occasion. It explains why I am disturbed. It is because I cannot place my trust completely in God. When a man advances in knowledge, it somehow prevents him from trusting in God completely, as a child would trust. Jesus said, unless you become like little children, you will not find the kingdom of God. Little children do not have a problem with trust. They trust their parents. And if you ask them to trust God, they will trust God. They will trust Him more than an adult would. Somehow, the relative absence of knowledge enables children to place their trust completely in God. The more knowledge, the more grief, said Solomon. The more one knows, the more one studies, the more one is confused. The more one is not clear, at least. I don't think I am confused. I am aware of the plurality that exists in the interpretation of Jesus Christ. Some people think he is God. Others think that he is not God, but simply a great man who had noble ideas. There are some who believe that he died on the cross. There are others who believe that he survived the cross. There are some who think that he lived in Israel all his life. There are others who think that he lived in other parts of the world, notably Kashmir in India. There are all kinds of theories floating around. There are all kinds of research so-called research. Floating around.
what should a person believe? I think that is entirely left to the person. As far as I'm concerned, though I'm aware of all these interpretations, though I'm aware of all these possibilities, the biblical possibility is the most probable to me. Jesus is the Son of God. He is the Word made flesh. That is what I choose to believe at the end of the day. But the belief in this concept is not without struggle because it comes after a great deal of comparison. As one grows in knowledge and one learns about the other theories regarding Christ, one will have to compare and evaluate the theories and finally decide to believe in something. I'd rather believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. That is the way I started. That is the way I will go on. Some of the things I say are not as clearly and definitively stated as as they should desirably be stated. But I do relish, I must say, relish in a peculiar sense, I do relish the element of doubt in my faith because it makes my faith genuine, at least in my own eyes. I do not pretend to to believe completely. I do not pretend to believe without doubt. Somehow the presence of doubt makes my faith an enduring thing because it is a product of conflict and it has emerged strongly despite the conflict. And if my faith were to be totally divorced from doubt, I don't think it would be much of a faith really because there is no struggle involved in that faith. I believe struggle should be involved in faith. Though so Christ did say, trust as a child would trust. And I'm not sure whether children have any struggle in trusting someone, especially their parents, as long as their parents live up to their expectations. But it is more difficult to trust as one grows older. And somehow the difficulty of trusting and the struggle involved in faith makes faith more appealing to me than it would be if I were a child. So essentially what I am saying today is this. I do not convey a faith that is utterly certain. And I'm glad that my faith is not utterly certain. I'm glad that my faith has an element of doubt in it. Because the doubt makes the faith a product of struggle. And as a product of struggle, my faith is more interesting than it would be if it emerged from no struggle. As long as I believe in God, whatever struggle was involved in my belief is not difficult to accept.